Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about evaluating expressions. Make sure you have the note sheet with you in front of you. Um, if you notice, this first slide gives you kind of steps to evaluate an algebraic expression. So step one says substitute the given value for each variable and rewrite the algebraic expression using a numeric expression. So that sounds like a lot, but basically if you look down at the example, all the first step tells you to do is take your expression, so in this case b squared minus 10, and it tells you b equals 6. So our key point here is to substitute 6 into our expression where b is. So if you look, it says step 1, and instead of b, we put our 6. So instead of b squared minus 10, we have 6 squared minus 10, which is our new expression. Now step two says simplify following order of operations. Remember we talked about order of operations was PEMDAS, so parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So we don't have any parentheses, so we can skip that. Exponent comes before multiplication, division, addition, or subtraction, which means 6 squared needs to happen first. 6 times 6 gets us 36. Bring down our minus 10. And then 36 minus 10 gets us our answer of 26. And we're done. All right, here are our next two problems. The first one says 6, and then in parentheses, y squared plus 2 if y equals 2. So step 1 is to substitute 2 into our expression where y is. So we bring everything else with us. So 6, parentheses, instead of y, I put my 2, bring my exponent, my plus sign, 2, and my parentheses. And then we follow order of operations. So PEMDAS parentheses, but then inside my parentheses, I have an exponent and an addition sign. Exponent comes first. So bring down everything else. 2 squared is 2 times 2, which gets me 4. Bring down plus 2. Now, I still have to work inside my parentheses before I can do anything else. So 4 plus 2 is 6. Bring down everything. Now remember, parentheses stands for multiplication. So in this problem, 6 times 6 would give me an answer of 36. And we're done. Go ahead and try this second problem on your own and then check back with the video to check your answer. Okay, so hopefully you're done. Number 2 gives us the problem n over 2 plus 2 when n equals 4. So first step is to substitute 4 for where the n is. So we have 4 over 2 plus 2. Now remember the fraction bar stands for division. Division comes before addition. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Bring down our plus 2. And then to solve, we have to do 2 plus 2 to get our answer 4. The next two problems are a little bit more difficult, but they're still following the same steps. So in this case, we have 12 over n plus 3m. So you've got to remember when a number and a variable are squished together, that means 3 times m. So don't forget, multiplication is happening in between there, and don't forget, fraction bar represents division. Okay, so now we have n equals 2 and m equals 4. So first step is to substitute into our expression. So 12 over, instead of n, we put in our 2, plus 3 times m, which we put in our 4. And remember, parentheses represents multiplication. So when we read this left to right, our division comes first, 
12 divided by 2 is 6. Bring down everything else. Then we have 6 plus 3 times 4, so multiplication comes next. Bring down our 6 plus 3 times 4 is 12. Then this is a one-step problem. 6 plus 12 gets me my answer, 18. Go ahead and pause the video and try the second problem. When you get your answer, check back to check your work. Okay, so hopefully you're done number two. When you did this, K equaled 8 and H equals 2. So when you plug it in, step one, substitute 16. Divide it by, instead of K, we put 8. Plus 7, instead of H, we do times 2. Again, when we read it from left to right, this division comes first. So 16 divided by 8 is 2. Bring down everything else. Then we have multiplication and addition. Multiplication comes first. So bring down 2 plus 7 times 2 is 14. Final answer, 2 plus 14 should have gotten you 16. So this next problem starts with a word problem. And it tells us to use the formula D equals R times T. So distance equals rate times time. Okay, so keep that in mind when we go to our word problem. It says Shelly drove 35 miles per hour for three hours. How far did she drive? So in this case, we have T, our time, equaled three hours. And we have our rate, our average speed, was 35 miles per hour. So we're looking for our distance. We can use those numbers to plug it back into our equation. So distance equals rate, which was 35, times time, which was 3. When I do 35 times 3, 5 times 3 is 15, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So my distance equals 105, and our units should be miles. Done. Okay, on the back, now we have a rectangle, and they give us a formula again. So I'm going to rewrite the formula down so I have more room. They tell us we're trying to find the perimeter, and to do that, we have to do 2 times our length, L, plus 2 times our width, W. Okay, so in the end, we're trying to find perimeter. Now, if we look at the rectangle, they gave us our length and our width. In this problem, our length, our L, is 8, and our width, W, is 3. We can use those two numbers and plug them into our equation to solve for perimeter. So we're following the same two steps again. Substitute our numbers in to where our variables are. So our first two times our length, which was eight, plus two times our width, which was three. We have to read this from left to right. So two times eight, is 16, bring down everything else. We have addition and we have multiplication, so multiplication comes first. Bring down our 16 plus two times three, which is six. And then our final answer, 16 plus six, would get us 22. Now, this is a word problem, so don't forget, you need your units meters on your answer. Now this next problem is a little bit different. We still have a rectangle, but in this case, they're asking us to find our area. So we use the formula, area equals length times width. So A is area, L is length, W is width. Again, our rectangle gives us our length. So L was 7.1 and our width is 2.2. 
so we can use our two numbers and plug them into our problem to solve for our area. So in this case, it's just length times width. We know that because length and width, the L and the W are squished together, so that means we need to multiply. So for L, 7.1 times our width, our W, 2.2. So let's do our work off to the side, 7.1 times 2.2, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 7 is 14, put our 0, cross out our 2, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 7 is 14, then we add 2 plus 0 is 2, 4 plus 2 is 6, 1 plus 4 is 5, 0 plus 1 is 1, but you cannot forget your decimal. So I need to move it once there, once there, which means in my answer, I need to move it in one, two spots. So my area should be 15.62 meters squared, because we're talking area. Go ahead and upload a picture of both sides of these notes and then start your practice options.